Number one. Tales of Rongovia. This is the secret book of Rongovia, a place where everybody is out of sorts. And no wonder, because everything is out of time and place. To decipher the book's code, we will tell you tales, and you will tell us their mistakes. Let's begin. We are at the court of King Henry VIII. Fun-loving Henry likes sports. But which of these sports could not have been played in the 1500s? Tennis? Bowling? Boxing? Or basketball? Well, King Henry could have played tennis. It had been around for about 300 years. And bowling is one of the oldest sports. Boxing. The first boxing match happened 3,000 years ago, so King Henry could have been a boxer. But what he could not have played was basketball. That sport wasn't invented until 1891. So, King Henry never dunked, unless it was a dumpling. A don't dribble, Henry. Now we return to Tales of Rongovia. The year is 1142, and it is the golden age of chivalry. Now, when a noble knight tried to impress a lovely lady fair, he could have used all of these eating tools except one. Which one of these could he not have used? A golden goblet? A silver fork? A metal knife? A jeweled spoon? Well, he could have used a knife. And goblets and spoons were found even in the poorest huts. But in England, forks were still unknown at the table. Knives and spoons did the job, and food was finger-licking good. Now we flip the page to the time of the mighty Roman Empire. Ah! Emperor Julius Caesar, who makes Rome his home, is having a wild and crazy party. At this festivity, the emperor could have tasted all of these delicate morsels except one. Which one could he not have had? Luscious melons, lemon ices, sweet dried fruits, or chocolate candies? Well, available to our emperor were luscious melons, as well as sweet dried fruits. And Julius could also have enjoyed a frosty treat of lemon ices. But what Julius could not have enjoyed at his party was chocolate candies. Chocolate comes from the South American cacao bean, and the ancient Romans didn't even know that South America existed. <coughs> Julius Caesar lived until 44 BC. BC, before chocolate. And now we turn to the early 1600s, and we are in the time of the famous playwright William Shakespeare. Shakespeare hath come down with a case of the flu and cannot attend the premiere of Hamlet. To sneeze or not to sneeze? <laughs> to treat his patient, Shakespeare's doctor could have used only one of the following. A stethoscope, an x-ray, penicillin, 
leeches for bloodletting. Which one could his doctor have used? His doctor had no stethoscope. It was invented in the 1800s. As for the x-ray, that was invented in 1895. And penicillin was discovered in 1928. So, Will's doctor could only have used live leeches for bloodletting. It was believed that the leeches would drink up the bad blood. But leeches can't do much to cure the flu. So, Will Shakespeare would have been better off with chicken soup. Now it's time to close the book of Rongolia. The sun is coming up, so it's time to say good night. I bid you farewell with a fond hello. Game number two. Hey, hey, gang, it's memory rock time. Introducing that sensational new group, the Cucumbers! Singing their new song, My Boyfriend! Okay, get ready. This is a memory game, and you must watch carefully, because the picture that you see is gonna disappear. Watch carefully, because I'm gonna ask you to remember what you see, what it is that you see. Got it? Good, because it's gone. My boyfriend won't Here comes our number one big hit question. How many members are there in the band? Were you watching? How many members in the band? If you said four, you hit the score. Hey, hey, there are three guitars and one drummer. And the memory rock just keeps on rocking with question numero two. How many cucumbers are singing at the mic? I ask you now, how many are singing at the mic? My boyfriend Tell me two boyfriend and I love you. There's that sweet little pickle Dina and that sour pickle John. So there's vocalist two singing my boyfriend. The memory rock rocks on. Now watch those guitars, cause here comes a tuppy. Watch him, watch him now. How many of the guitarists are strumming those strings with their left hand? That's right. How many are lefties? Here's the answer. The question's done. They're all right-handed, so the answer's none. <laughs> Check out how they're strumming those guitars, and you'll know I'm right on. And I'm going right on to question number four. How many drums does our drummer boy drum? How many drums make up this beat? He's so funny, he just jokes, knows me. If you said three, then right you'd be. Hey, there's one bass, one snare, and one tom-tom. Okay, now you think you're ready for anything. Well, I'll take that notion apart with a killer question. Only one in a million listeners gets this one. Good luck. What's the name of the cucumbers' song? What's the title of the song they're singing? The title is... If you've got that right, you've got a memory I would not, because you are a genuine memory rock! Game number three. Boy, it's frightening out there. But am I scared? Nah, no way. You know what I think? It's time to play Safari Solitaire. Okay, so let's play. You pick the card that doesn't belong. All of these animals are in danger of becoming extinct except one. Which one animal is not in danger? 
You got your giant panda, your blue whale, the Siberian tiger, and one of your Antarctic penguins. Okay, which one is not endangered? Did you pick the panda? Poor pandas are in trouble. This fussy eater eats mainly bamboo, which more and more people cut down to make room for farmland. Did you say the blue whale? This big baby is in 150 tons of trouble because they've been hunted down. Oh, it's no wonder that these blue whales are singing the blues. What about the Siberian tiger? You got it. Siberian tigers are hunted down for their skins. Yep. Which leaves us the penguin. Ha <laughs> ha, good news. No one wants to eat them, wear them, or steal their food. So there are plenty of baby penguins around. On with the game. Did you hear something growl? I feel like an endangered species. Well, let's play. Well, let's play it again, kiddo. Okay. And now for a tender loving story. Which one of these animals gives birth to the smallest baby? A kangaroo? A rabbit? A pig? A chimpanzee? Well, it's not the rabbit. And it's not the pig. And it's not the chimpanzee. The animal that has the smallest baby is the kangaroo. <laughs> this tiny little fella is less than one inch when he makes the climb into his big mama's pocket. And it'll take another five months before it pokes his head out and says, Hi, Mom. And now for a jumpy story. Which one of these animals can jump the highest relative to its size? A frog? A grasshopper, a flea, a cat. It's not the cat. It's not the grasshopper. <laughs> Scratch the frog. It's not the frog. But a flea can jump 100 times its body size. Why do fleas jump so high? What else has a flea got to do? Watch television? <laughs> And that's it, the end of Safari Solitaire, my favorite card game. Help! When's the next bus to Texas? Game number four. Hello, friends and foes, this is Chuck Roast the Riddler. And have I got pot boilers for you? I'm talking belly busters, thigh slappers, and gigantic groans. You'll laugh and moan as hard as a ticklish hippopotamus being tormented by a giant feather duster. <laughs> and speaking of hippos, a big subject, a weighty issue. Here comes riddle number uno. It's about three fat ladies. There was Roly-Poly Polly, Tremendous Tessie, and Enormous Edith. These three big ladies were walking down Main Street under one small umbrella. I ask you, 
Why did the three fat ladies under the umbrella not get wet? Why? Because it wasn't raining. <laughs> Do I hear a gale of laughter? Did somebody call me a drip? Well, dry up, because here comes the next rattled riddle. What happened to the wolf who fell into the washing machine? This one was told to me by Red Riding Hood herself. So what happened to the wolf who fell into the washing machine? He became a wash and werewolf. Get it? Werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another doozy. <laughs> I got a million of them. Okay, so what's gray and has a trunk? This is a real squeaker, and I tell you no tales. So, what's gray and has a trunk? No, not an elephant. Eeks, a mouse going on vacation. <laughs> Ready for more? Can you stand it? Yeah? So what's tan and has a trunk? You got it! A mouse coming back from vacation. <laughs> Wasn't that monstrous? <laughs> and speaking of monsters, what do you get if you cross Frankenstein with a hot dog? That's a spooker. So what do you get if you cross Frankenstein with a hot dog? Get a Frankenfurterstein. And I wouldn't advise you to put mustard and sauerkraut on one. Stop hooting. Stop hooting. This is Chuck Roast, your pitiful puzzler saying so long. And remember, if you see King Kong climbing up the side of your house, don't go ape. <laughs>「トゥリッキーディジェットヴィル」「The town where numbers are every little thing and every much everywhere」「The people who live here are called the devious digit maniacs and not without reason」「The digit maniacs do nothing but think about number games every second minute and hour of their lives」「So get ready to match your wits with the terribly tricky digits」Here is the picturesque Digitville Forest, one of the Digit Maniac's most delightful picnic spots. A favorite question Digit Maniacs will often ask is, how far can a Digit Maniac go into the forest? Seems like an easy question, but it's tricky. How far can a Digit Maniac go into the forest? How far? Watch out for this one. Halfway. Because after that, the maniac is on his way out of the forest. <laughs> Get the picture? These are the challenges of Digitville, and these are the mischievous ways of its maniacs. Now, this is the office of Dr. Addybones, the leading doctor of Digitville. A favorite treatment of Dr. Addybones is to prescribe anti maniac pills. If Dr. Addybones prescribes one pill every half hour, how long would it take a patient to take three pills? This one's not so simple. The answer is one hour. Since the patient would take the first pill right away, the second a half hour later, and the third a half hour after that. And Digit Maniac pills are hard to swallow. Now, Digit maniacs love to play dominoes, meet Donald, and meet Dennis. They each played three games. Each won three games, but they were not tied. Why? Tricky, tricky. Look again. They weren't playing each other. 
Now, to get away from nasty numbers and to breathe clean air, digit maniacs often take buses to other cities. Here's a bus ride with a curve, so watch carefully. The Digitville bus starts out empty, and at the first stop, it picks up seven digit maniacs. At the next stop, three get on and five get off. And the next stop, four get on and two get off. And the next stop, two get on. And at the last stop, one gets off. Okay. Here's the curve. How many stops did the bus make? The answer? Five stops. Were you counting digit maniacs? Sure, there were eight maniacs on the bus, but that wasn't the question. Well, now it's time to leave Tricky Digitville and all its hysterical numericals. Here in Digitville, even time can run out. And it has. Game number six. The final game. Imaginary. But the places and things along the way are real. After a two million year visit on the planet Earth, the homesick space creature BLT prepares to return to his faraway planet. It is time to play a space scramble. Aseps Gevoya. Unscramble. Five. Four, three, two, one. Time for Space Voyage! Here at the Stargaze panel, BLT guides his ship to outer space. Passing the planet Mars, all seems a-okay. Suddenly, the crisis monitor reveals Irodetsus approaching. Irodetsus! Irodetsus! What are they? DLT must navigate around these Irodetsas to avoid hitting one that is 600 miles across. Five seconds remain. What are Irodetsas? Unscramble. Three, two, one. Asteroids. They are asteroids. Phew. That was close. Suddenly, Crisis Monitor alerts. Watch out for Repugent, largest planet in solar system. Its atmosphere has great red spot, three times size of Earth. Repugent has many moons. What is it? Unscramble, three, two, one. It's Jupiter! Safe. <sighs> no harm there. Time to relax. Again, the warning light. Warning, warning. DLT approaches fearful and dreaded Clavicilo. A collapsed star with force so great, nothing escapes, not even light. It is invisible. Clavicilo! It's now or never. Unscramble, three, two, one. Black hole! DLT, you made it! Now, BLT, unscramble the password to your destination, Axagali. There are billions of these in the universe, made up of stars, dust, and gas. Unscramble, Axagali, three, two, one. Galaxy! BLT is home at last. And there she is, Rethem. After two million years, dinner is still hot and waiting. DLT's Rethem. Who is it? Unscramble. Three, two, one. Mother. Aseps Gavoya is over. DLT's successful mission has avoided collision with 
Irodetsus, Refugit, and survived the nothingness of Klabak Elo. At last, he arrives at his home, Axigali, and finds his dear old weapon. Pleasant dreams, ELT. And good night. Brain Games is now over. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, get ready. This is a memory game, and you must watch carefully, because the picture that you see is gonna disappear. So what's tan and has a trunk? You got it. A mouse coming back from vacation. <laughs> Julius Caesar lived until 44 BC. BC, before chocolate. This tiny little fella is less than one inch when he makes the climb into his big mama's pocket. And it'll take another five months before he pokes his head out and says, Hi, Mom. A favorite treatment of Dr. Addybones is to prescribe anti-maniac pills. To sneeze or not to sneeze. <laughs> ah! Why do fleas jump so high? What else has a flea got to do? Watch television? <laughs> sure, there were eight maniacs on the bus, but that wasn't the question. Pleasant dreams, ELT. And good night. The preceding program has been recommended for family viewing by the National Education Association.